Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is a Friday, February 2nd, 2018, and I want to talk about the ninth incarnation of the Iron Cell. For those of you who are new here, I have been developing for the past year a all-iron battery chemistry that's designed to be extremely inexpensive, extremely safe, and used to store renewable energy which is intermittent and needs some way to take electricity that is derived from when the sun is shining and use it for when the sun is not. The way an iron cell works is we have an iron anode and on the other side we have an iron salt, an iron 3 plus cathode. And the oxidation of the iron to iron 2 is coupled to the reduction of the iron 3 to iron 2. I have constructed a all iron cell based on a design linked in the description Long story short, I have assembled a plastic bag with the anode, the cathode, and a separator all in the same bag. Makes it fairly easy to assemble a bunch of them in parallel or in series when we're ready. And in the meantime, I've been testing the performance of single cells using a pine potentiostat. And the latest incarnation used an iron sulfate catholite. So iron three sulfate was the, the cathode chemistry. And it performed remarkably well. So I got a question in the comments last week, you know, how does this compare to a lithium ion? And in terms of energy density, not well. It's about two or 300 times less energy dense than a typical lithium ion battery. That's still better than it was a few months ago when it was more than a thousand times less energy dense than a typical lithium ion cell. So we're making progress, but still two or 300 times is, is a big difference. So why do I say that the cell did well if it's 300 times less energy dense than lithium ion? Well, because over the course of that discharge, it didn't lose much capacity. So I charged 1.4 something volts and discharged all the way down to almost zero. And I did that many, many times over the course of 18 hours. And it really held up. You can see that the amplitude of that saw wave is, is not diminishing by much, indicating that the battery is holding its capacity through many charge discharge cycles. That's pretty impressive. I set it up to run again. This time I didn't discharge it all the way down to almost zero volts. I discharged it only to about 0.6 volts. And at that point, I started to see some irreproducibility. I'm not getting a full discharge, so the battery never quite goes all the way down. But still, it's pretty happy to keep uh, charging and discharging with a reasonably constant amplitude throughout. How can we improve it? We can add more iron. Right now, iron sulfate is the cathode and iron sulfate is not very soluble in water, which means that there's just not a lot of iron three available to do chemistry. So hopefully we can resolve that. But until we resolve that, it's still worth remembering that iron is so cheap that despite the fact that it has a ridiculously low energy density, it may yet do better on a dollars per kilowatt hour basis than a lithium ion battery. Though you certainly wouldn't want to run your car on such a thing, even if it was cheaper per kilowatt hour. It's just ooh, too much weight to drag around. But if you were gonna put this in your backyard and so store solar energy, well, dollars per kilowatt hour is much more important than kilowatt hours per gram. If you like that kind of thing, please do tune in every week. We talk about iron batteries and sustainable energy and the projects that we're working on right here in the Allen Lab.